and welcome to the Awesome Cast number 99. We're almost flipping the digits. Is that right? Yay! Yeah. One more week. One more me- week, and maybe we'll have something special planned. I'm not sure. I don't know what we're going to do for 100. Really Mike's, kind of Mike's going to take his pants off and run up and down the street. Maybe. 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 That 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 uh, dropping all the great suggestions over there is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com. Hey, guys. Hey. How you doing? I am doing fantastically well. You are. Uh, how are you? I'm great. Rob? I'm great. How are you, Rob? How are you, Rob? I'm uh, David Crater. I'm good. I'm distracted. Uh, my uh, one of my coworkers is currently assembling a fish tank. Ooh. Uh, so we got that going on. That and, sounds fancy. Um, yeah. What are you in right now? Are you in like a soundproof like? He's in the dome egg chair or something. Is it an egg chair? Is that? Hang on one second. Uh oh. Is it, is the Uh-oh. thing happening? Is the thing happening? Uh oh. All right. Well, we also have the hangout open. There's the notes and Frank. Fuzzwad of the insert coin to begin as well. Yes, he's one of my minions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time we've had anybody actually in the hangout and it was working. So uh, we'll see uh, you know, if anybody else drops by and wants to uh, uh, say anything and uh, we'll kind of roll with it from there. It's kind of a new experiment, so we're rolling with that. Uh, Rob, you're back. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. You're back. Is everything cool? All the fire is <laughs> out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah okay. every, everything's taken care of. The... Um, there was uh, there was an infiltration of the fortress. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> random person felt walked in. The no, not quite, not look, quite a random. Look, person. Looking for the yoga class uh, across the street. Not, not exactly. You no. know, every time somebody uh, asks us what we do in here, we give them. We like to give them like random answers, um, because nobody knows where we are. It's all very top secret. So like, eventually, you'll, like we have very tiny windows in the front, and if you look in at the right time, you'll see something really weird, and they're like, "Hey, what do you do?" And we're like, oh, and then insert random answer every single time. So it's like, <laughs> oh, you know, um, uh, it's a it's a small laboratory for um, what do you what do you call it? A uh, weaponized um, <laughs> weaponized. Huh? I guess you could call it bacteria. I mean, it has legs. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. That's why I'm glad we're in the basement. So, <laughs> although I wonder what my neighbors think, because I'm pretty sure they can see what what's going on down here, and all the yelling too. So you know, yeah, um, a lot of yelling. Yeah, a lot there's of profanity. So before occasional we get, nudity. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, hey, yeah, this is the awesome cast. If you're new, if you met up with us over at the Pittsburgh Comic Con this past weekend, we had a great time out there. Uh, this is the awesome cast where we geek out about tech, whatever's on our mind. Uh, that we to geek, geek out, about. out with your face with with Chachi's face. Yes, no, exactly. not my face. Your face. We are face. here live Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern over at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Um, and it's 7 p.m. Eastern time, uh, Twitter, uh, we're at awesomecast. You can also drop us an email to contact at awesomecast.com. Whoa. Whoa. Don't eat the microphone. There we go. There we go. Um, and, and other ways you can, what, what were you, where was I at? Uh, oh yeah. Hey, we're on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, um, you can watch YouTube. Watch Creepily from outside of Michael's. Basement. And and my basement here at one five three. Oh, no, I mean yes. Um, <laughs> it'll be weird if somebody just started. Oh, well, you you see when we have guests for the mayhem show that come in, it, it weirds me out to see somebody walking down. It's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, I don't know if you remember the old Super Mario show where they had the little window because they're in the basement. Never mind. I went off on a tangent. But uh, first, before we get into the news, I, I'd like to share about Chachi's convergence to the Apple. Uh, community i'm not convergent anywhere you're convergent i'm trying to put look, linux on look the at damn the ac- thing look at the acquisitions that you've made made lately from nowhere to uh you you got your iphone that we talked about it's at home on my desk <laughs> that you didn't bring yeah. um you uh but, but we'll, we'll show what you got there now this is thanks to aj a non-functioning powerbook g4 <laughs> okay. that i'm trying to put linux on it's, tr- it's hard to put it off racism there and then you're gonna have an imac when you leave here today yeah welcome welcome Welcome, uh, sir. Which, which iMac is he getting? Uh, it's a it's a white one. It's a big one. It's well, not. Is, it, is well, it the the pod with the face? No, 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 no. It's a. Uh, it's. I a, love the pod with the face <laughs> one. That is my favorite iMac ever. Your roommates had one. Yeah, of those. one of my roommates had them. Uh, we called it the lamp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they were pretty. Like of all the models of iMac, that was one of the more forward thinking. Yeah. When I, you look at the the. Um, you know those uh, clear speakers that they paired up with those? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, you'll see people who have really modern, like, super nice 30-inch brushed aluminum desktops with Mac Pros and stuff. 
and those speakers <laughs> because they're still awesome and they're still like aesthetically incredible. Whether they still sound good though? Oh yeah, they still sound amazing. Nice, nice. It was back when uh, I have I actually have a set of speakers, not those, but uh, from the I think they're made by Alltech Lansing or JBL um, from like the same year, and all the speakers they made that year were really cheap and they sounded amazing. Nice, nice. Um, well, they actually no, we're giving. I don't know. Have you seen the iMac that's down here in the studio? The old one. Is it one of the one of the, like candy colored ones? No, or? it's no, it's no, no. Yeah, but I, I may be acqui- right but I actually may be acquiring two of those in the very near future and a G4 tower. Um, well, we'll see how that goes with this client. Um, no, it's it's the white IMAX before they had the brush aluminum ones. Um, they're uh, just a monitor. Uh, it's a smaller one. It's a 1.8 core duo. Uh, so you can't put Snow Leopard on it. Uh, and it has a nice crack in the screen. I don't know if you saw my Instagram from a few days ago uh, of the crack. So you're really giving him like the best thing you could come up with. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't have a use necessarily for it. I'd rather get him on the bandwagon. I'll give him a little bit more than what this uh, PowerBook is going to give him with the G4. You course. don't know that. I'm hoping. What do you mean I don't know that? You don't know that. Well, I, I know. I may turn this into the most amazing computer man has ever seen. But... Well, I know this one's at least already running Snow Leopard and has two gigs of RAM. So hopefully I can drop iMovie on there for you and you'll be good to go to get started with your... Uh, your your own part of the empire. What you say? You want you know, to do you know what's really going to stink about this? You're I just judging me. What? What's that, Rob? The, uh, the so what's going to happen is if you're using the internet, you're going to want to do things like you know listen to Pandora maybe, mm-hmm. uh, and Pandora runs on Flash, and <laughs> it'll run on the latest version of Flash, but you won't be able to install because you can't get the latest version of any browser on OS nine. It's not it's, OS nine. It's like it's like like Leopard, like Leopard. Oh, yeah. oh. Well, that one's Leopard. the The laptop is nine. Right? Well, the laptop, the laptop will be. I thought you said it was a PowerBook, like a G four. Yeah, you can put uh, you can put Leopard on that. You do Leopard on a PowerBook G four? Mm-hmm. It was the last one that still did PowerPC. Oh yeah. Come on, man. You've been with this longer than I have. Superseded the Leopard was superseded by the Leopard. Are you reading Wikipedia? Okay, yeah, all right. He so is we, he is. He's, he's on Wikipedia. Uh, well, I didn't. Man, I wasn't with OSX before the days of Leopard. Oh, really? Yeah, man. Hmm. I I bought my first uh, Mac in two thousand and seven. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and Leopard came out uh october 2007 i think we were leopard first yeah when we when we switched over at the video house i worked at so anyway i just happen to have the stuff around but i don't have much experience with it. reminiscing um but no but i i think i think chachi you're gonna enjoy it you're already enjoying the iphone at least so try to trying to so excellent excellent um i facetimed the entire uh pod camp meeting the other day yeah yeah Oh, yeah, that's right. You did it from your phone. That's right. Yep. That's right. So, yeah, that, that is handy. Oh, we were also doing a Google Hangout from the car. Uh, yeah. That yeah, was fun, too, because uh, we were missing the beginning of Raw last night, as we usually do. So, anyways, so I love, love where we're at here. Um, so, let's get into it. Uh, well, yeah, like I said, I wanted to report anything uh, geeky that happened at the uh, Pittsburgh Comic Con. Uh, there were lots of iPads being used. That's yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's that's a big it. problem. It's Pittsburgh, you know. I well, I, I don't remember last year we had there there was somebody there that was uh that was with Cloud Nine it was like another kind of indie uh, digital comic book distribution and there wasn't even anything like that there it mm. really was it was really kind of disappointing like I didn't even shoot any video because I kind of looked around and saw mostly the same faces and I was like well okay that's what it is so yeah that I don't know I don't know what they're doing with Pittsburgh Comic Con I was kind of surprised by that too just the fact that no one like uh. You mentioned uh, Cloud Nine. I know I use Comixology, but yeah, nothing like that was there. No, no. Just... And Cloud Nine, because like, it was just like somebody that was there with their comic book, and they just like were. It was one of those like Cloud Nine was like, here's some promotional material if you're going around the cons and stuff. It seemed to be what the setup was, uh, and they talked about it when we interviewed them and everything uh, for the Sorgatron Media Specials. Uh, but. Yeah, there was nothing. I mean, there was a really, really interesting uses of, like, say, iPads. The guys next to us had a pretty cool display set up uh, for some photography thing, even though they bolted for the Sunday and everything like that. 
Um, but I don't know. Altogether, it, we did fine enough, like, you know, uh, uh, for, for promoting what we're doing and the wrestling DVDs and everything. Uh, but the biggest thing was, like, Stan Lee was there, and it was like nobody in Pittsburgh cared or knew about it. Well, hasn't he been there for the last few years? Not not here. He hasn't been here for a while. And when I, you know, last year was my first introduction to the con. And when everybody talked about it, they're like, yeah, it was really big when Stan Lee was here a few years ago. But oh. it really seems like it's kind of waned. And it really felt like there was less people there this year than there was even last year uh, to a point. Uh, but maybe, I don't know if it's perception, you know, thinking back and everything or because I went to those other cons. But I don't know. I don't know. But the, but you don't see any really use of social media with these guys. I don't remember any ads. I put something on Twitter and everybody's like, that's this weekend. Really? Hmm. And who's there? You know, um, so I don't know. I, it just really kind of put me off from the whole weekend. But well, I feel like at the same time, I mean, the comic industry in general is is hurting because of the digital age and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's refining itself. I think people are dropping out of being collectors uh, because that crashed, you know. Uh, financially, at least, you know, as far as, you know, how much books are worth. Um, so it, it really kind of took out any reason for people to collect. Yeah. Like, I just like to read. I'm a completist. I'll buy the DVDs that have, like, the entire, you know, the legit DVDs. I got to say, the legit DVDs, because I know there's the illegitimate ones out there. They have, like, the entire, like, X Uncanny X-Men run. And I'll read through it because I want the story. Um, and I wouldn't mind, you know, if, if, if it's cheaper. And I had a really good conversation, actually, with uh, one of the dealers there. Uh, that I presume they're from some kind of comic book shop in the area um, about that and and you know what they need to do for that and they get you know and he was like well they need to they need to strike a balance because you know they can't leave the shops out the dust you know and it's the price point it's not what they're doing with it it's it's that four dollar price point and really it's it's really hard to justify four dollars for a comic book that I read yeah. in like twenty minutes tops really so you know versus a magazine. You know, right. where you get a lot more out of it for five, six, eight dollars. So, yeah. But you know, that's what that is. I don't know. We we should get a we should get a the guys from Comic Book Pit on again to kind of update what's going on in the industry over there every once in a while. Uh, I know we talked about it here a couple of weeks ago. So, but yeah, nothing really big out of that. Uh, out of at least the local con here. Um, so, that's that. Um, so, uh, Chachi, you had this story. Yes. Now, um, th th tell, tell us about the Internet Hall of Fame. Well, first off, I'd like to uh, console both of you guys and uh, sadly let you know that we didn't make it this year. Okay, there's um, always next year, right? Yeah, there's always next year. And plus, uh, especially since we know about it now. Right. Well, it's new. Mm -hmm. It w it was just created. It is the inaugural year? Yeah, this is the first year they're doing it. But it's a legitimate Hall of Fame for the Internet. Mm -hmm. And it's split up into three categories. There's pioneers, global connectors, and innovators. I also like the stats here on the side. Nine countries yeah. represented. Eleven PhDs. Oh, yes. And uh, eleven published authors. Yeah. So the internet people have to have dead tree books. No, because there's more than a level eleven inductees this year. I know. But no, there's there's nine countries represented. In, uh, 11 PhDs, 11 authors, one Academy Award winner, one Emmy Award winner, one law degree, one Nobel Peace Prize, and one sir. Or, I shouldn't say that, it's one person knighted by the Queen. Hmm. But, uh, it's a pretty extensive list this year, so I'm curious to see what they'll do next year. But, uh, like I said, it's split, in, split into three categories. Um, and they're all different parts of what created the internet as we know it now. Like, and you can laugh all you want, but Al, Al Gore is on this list because mm -hmm. we all know he created the internet. What was? I, I, I'm sorry, it's been so long. I can't remember what all that was about. What did he actually do for the internet? He pushed for funding. He pushed. Yeah, for funding. he spent a lot of um, a lot of money and a lot of time not inventing the internet, but putting. <laughs> Uh, basically a heavy amount of support from the government behind the people who were inventing the internet. Yeah. I mean, it, he, there's the Gore Bill in 91, mm -hmm. which is the uh, High Performance Communing and Communications Act. Communing and Communications? Yeah, computing, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, and that brought $600 million for help to uh, provide the internet to everyday people. And not just military. 
and such. But I mean, it, th there's lots of people on this list. Uh, the creator of Lim Linux is on this list. Uh, the creator of Firefox. The creator of email, Your PGP. Vin Vancy Vince Surf's on this. That's yeah. good. That's good. So, I mean, it's a... it's. Yeah, it's a pretty decent honest. Yeah, but... there, there's no real bullshitting in this list. I'd like to find out who runs this list. Yeah, there's the about button. But, um, <laughs> I'd like uh, to find out more. <laughs> let's, uh... The Internet Society... That's Internet good. Society's global <laughs> INEC conference in Geneva, Switzerland. Oh. Okay. It's in Geneva, so it must be legitimate. Right. I'm not going to argue with them. You can't argue with Geneva. No. No. There's trees happen there. But I mean, uh, yeah, they broke down all the information. Uh, Pioneers is individuals who are instrumental in early design. Uh, innovators, the ones who made great advances and uh, connectors who helped make it grow globally or... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it'll be interesting. I mean, it really seems like they covered all their bases. I mean, here's one. Uh, Michelle Baker, instrumental in Netscape's decision to release its source code uh, to the public. Uh, she got on to become one of the most influential open source advocates in the world. That's even... I mean, that's not just internet. That's that's software. I mean, that's 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 a pioneer right. that leads to what you know the reason you have an Android phone, right? You know, in the long run. So uh, it, it, it's really like the whole the whole computer in general. Well, I guess it all kind of blends together these days, anyways, because how much open source is out there on servers and stuff. So right. So, so I mean, the whole all of the information about every inductee is available at uh, internethalloffame.org. Excellent. You want to so, go read up on more of that? And I'm going to work on figuring out how to win us one of those little <laughs> yeah. awardy jobby things. I think we got a long ways to go. Oh, yeah. shut it. Yeah, maybe. Um, I will make the Internet Hall of Fame. <laughs> if it's the last thing I do. And it probably will be. Um. So uh, this other story, which kind of surprised me, I was uh, watching a lot of SourceFed this <laughs> couple of days ago, and uh, I saw this story come up uh, back on actually it was back on the 18th. But uh, and uh, here's one here's a here's a story from over at ABC, so we have something text to follow up on it. Uh, so apparent uh, apparently in Pennsylvania, oh no, it's California. I, I heard them wrong. Uh, parents sue Apple for in-app and in-game purchases made by kids. Now we heard about this before because there was the Smurf Berries incidents. <laughs> Can we call it? Can we call it Smurf Smurf uh, Smurfberry Gate or something? I don't. I don't Smurf know. Gate. Smurf, Smurfberry Gate. Smurf, Smurf. Smurf Gate. You, you have know? to stop saying Smurfberries. No, actually, you know, I think I brought up a different story. Uh, Pretty sure is... we just need to keep saying Smurf. Berries. Smurfberries. <laughs> Listen, don't let your kids. Don't let your kids get a kick addicted to. Uh, Stay away from the Smurfberries. Smurfberries and use a Smurf. Don't snort the Smurfberries, kids. Okay. Smurfberries taste like Smurfberries. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently there was, but apparently this is still going on because I mean they instituted things where you have to drop your password in for internet purchases like every time, right? But yeah. apparently kids are still getting by this, or the parents are letting their kids know what the passwords are and everything. And I, and I, I really think this is the wrong story because the one I was listening to was uh, it was in Pennsylvania. The kid it racked was up. To, what's that? It was, the the story you were talking about was in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, I must put up a different one here. Um, but it was two hundred dollars. It was something like Zombie Dash or something like that in another game, and uh, and, and they were they were actually suing Apple over it, um, and that these these games you know uh, bring the kids in you know for being free games. And of course, on the back end, like you know, other freemium games we're seeing that Simpsons game my wife is addicted to, um, and a lot of stuff like we're kind of seeing it when shoot many robots these days and stuff like that. And the, the, I'm sure the Family Guy online game we've been playing with is is going to be the same way. Uh, but you know, the back end thing, the in-app purchases, that's where they're going to make all their money for the people who are dedicated to that. Remember Godfinger? Holy crap! Um, so, sorry, I was looking at the chat. Um, I don't know what do we what do we think about this? I mean, is this really a problem, or is it just parents need to learn that that they need to watch their kids and make sure they don't have access to that kind of stuff? It's definitely the latter. The parent, like, it's just a lack of oversight for uh, 
the parents just watching what's going on on the phones. It's, there's no reason to give your child your password so that they can just go ahead and download and do whatever with your phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, sure, like, put Angry Birds, let them play a little bit, and yeah, that's fine, but, like, give them full access to do whatever they want with your phone. I mean, what happens if you have some kind of, like, super crazy intelligent kid and you get your phone back and, oh, look, my uh, phone's running Cyanogen Mod now. What is this? Like, that's going to be the next thing whenever some kid roots their uh, parent's phone and installs a custom ROM on it, and then they're complaining because Google allowed open source to have their kid install a custom ROM. Well, I mean, yeah, and I think we're talking about... Far fetched, but it could happen. And I think we're talking about younger kids when 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 this, you know, with situations like this, you know? I mean, I, I was over for Easter and, and saw one of my cousins give their... Uh, Oh, what was he? He had to been like, you know, maybe four years old, you know, handed him the phone to play Need for Speed. You know, that's what they're doing. And and if the parents aren't thinking about the back end of these purchases and protecting against it, you know, with the parental controls and they're, they're just handing their phone over. You know, it's not like, you know, some of them, you know, that have like the iPod touches where you could just lock it down and hand it to them. Um, but and I don't even know how effective the parental controls are. I, I've never, never messed with them myself. On that side, but I mean, they, they've definitely made measures to make it harder for you to do this by accident, and by and even when examples they're showing, you know, you can pay ninety nine ninety nine and buy snow, Smurf berries. Really, ninety nine ninety nine. You can buy a hundred dollars in real money worth of Smurf berries. That's all Smurf berries. Who is oh, doing this? Go buy some Smurf berries. Who is doing this? You know. <laughs> I mean, well, well, let's see if I, I need my fix. Now, Chachi, I know you did something like this with shoot, not. shoot many robots. Not ninety nine dollars worth, but you paid like the extra ten dollars that gave you enough coins to buy anything you wanted and shoot many robots, right? Yeah. Which I thought was a weird move. Why? It feels like it takes away from the building up of the of the of the game. Now I do thirty thousand damage, and you don't. <laughs> you got. Well, the- that's kind of like the uh, the dirt series. On uh, Xbox, PlayStation, all the major consoles, the off-road rally racing, they have, um, I think you can uh, burn a whole 1,600 point uh, Xbox Live point card and just unlock all the tracks and all the cars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just right off the bat. So, yeah. yeah, it's the same kind of thing. And I wouldn't mind, you know, I, and I, I maybe wouldn't mind something like that on a game like, like Mortal Kombat, because they don't always, you know... Remember when we had that Rocky game for uh, Chachi Plays and there was four characters that you start off with and you had to unlock the rest? But we just got it, so that was what we got stuck with. You know, I wouldn't mind something like that with a fighting game, maybe. Um, uh, WWE 12 has something similar where you pay $12 to get the fan access. You get all the downloadable content, you know, all the extra characters. Um, But it also unlocks everything, and I'm kind of waiting because I'm going through the stories and seeing what gets unlocked. You know, not reading ahead, seeing like, oh, yeah, hey, this guy's in there. Oh, and I got this outfit and I got this belt from the 90s. Okay, that's cool. You know, I I like seeing the rewards and seeing what pops up. And to me, that kind of takes away from the reward system of actually playing through the game, especially on something like that. That's not really a linear game like, you know, like your racing game, you know, kind of is in the same boat, you know, versus like something like Max Payne that I'm playing through and there's a level progression. Like you said, there's a difference. I'm not about to go out and spend money on something that I'm going to get anyhow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in Shoot Many Robots, I mean, you have to have nuts in order to buy the guns. Yeah, but you could just go play through the game and collect nuts and build them up. No. You'd still need Microsoft points in order to download some of the stuff. There is some of the stuff. Oh, so that thing also unlocked all that extra, those extra little guns that were like, hey, you have to buy this? Yeah. Well, a lot of them, not all of them. Okay, okay. So. Interesting. So, I, I don't know, it, it just, uh, well, that threw me creeping, uh, you know, extra s- stuff like that seemed very in-game, creeping into something I p- actually paid, was it $15 for that game? $10? Yeah. Which, you know, it was a l- lower price game, so it's not so bad. But, um, but other than that, uh, yeah, it is going to become a problem as, as a, uh, you know, something like, you know, Apple, you know, they're still building their ecosystem. You know, Microsoft has kind of came out of the gate with parental controls. And I mean, I remember old Sony PlayStation had parental controls back in the day before they had the deal with the Internet. So they know ki- these are going to be in kids' hands. And I think these are these devices are just more and more becoming ki- kid friendly. So 
Um, uh, apparently our chat's going weird again, so I'll see if I can deal with that here. Um, what else is going on here, guys? Uh, Rob, tell me what James Car Cameron's up to. Oh, you know, being James Cameron. <laughs> now, now, he did just spend some time on the bottom of the ocean where no man has gone before uh, taking pictures, I think it was, right? Yeah, well, he uh, James Cameron's secret is that he, he doesn't actually like making movies. He likes um, exploring things. So he gets people to pay him to make movies about exploring things, and that makes it so he doesn't have to pay to explore things. Okay. <laughs> right? So maybe, hypothetically, James Cameron wants to explore asteroids. And we're not talking about the Atari game. No, we're not. So uh, what this is is there's a, um, an asteroid mining plan that was <laughs> revealed. It's uh, put together by a bunch of people who have a whole lot of money, like James Cameron, uh, Eric Schmidt from Google, uh, former Microsoft chief, ar chief architect and space tourist, space tourist, uh, Charles Simonyi, um, and a bunch of other people with acceptable, exceptional amounts of money. Uh, and the plan is to, in the next couple of years, come up with some uh, space-going robots that are going to go seek out some asteroids that will have some rare minerals on them, um, like plutonium, that sort of thing, and uh, essentially go out there, find these asteroids, and then reset them to bring them into Earth's orbit. And then once they're in Earth's orbit, uh, build stations and, and crafts of sort that would mine these asteroids for these rare minerals, uh, as well as mining them for things like uh, water that can be found on asteroids to use that water to create hydrogen to fuel things like the International Space Station and other space missions um, and to create um, basically like quote-unquote gas stations in space to further other privatized probably space exploration. Wow. Yeah, and the timeline on this is pretty quick. Um, they're looking to have this going in the next few years. It's not something where you're going to see it in like, you know, 2000. 20 or something like that this is something that uh, i would expect to to hear a rumble of things actually like being built and going out into space in the next two to three years and this is this is all privatized you said yeah I mean, this is absolutely privatized nasa wow. isn't funding any of this that, that, that's amazing i can't believe we got to that point but maybe that's what needed to happen you know governments have all their own problems right yeah i mean if so. you're if you're familiar at all with any of the the nasa stuff that's going on lately there's uh, obviously a whole lot of budget cuts I and mean, if you listen to guys like uh, neil degrassi tyson they talk about how um you know the the u.s used to dream because we had this nasa space program and you could you could uh you know kids would grow up and be like i want to be an astronaut because astronauts are going to go out to these far off places and you can throw around numbers like uh the amount of money we spent on the bailout could have sent us to mars and all this stuff but the other side of it is that when you do things like the spacex prize where you have guys like richard branson with exceptional amounts of money saying you know what like we could probably put together something that will uh really blow the pants off of anything we've seen out of nasa as far as the speed at which this is developed um certainly there's other things to be put on the line like obviously space exploration much like deep sea exploration puts people's lives at risk but it's a matter of trusting corporations which sounds awful now that i say it but um <laughs> but just the idea that instead of the government and tax money funding the exploration of space that what if we what if we kind of push this stuff off to the, the the private industry and saying you know if you think you can build a spaceship go ahead and build a spaceship and what that does is it creates competition and we've all we all know what happens when you create competition. It just makes bigger and better and cooler things. It just means that the United States doesn't necessarily own this technology. It means that, you know, uh, in this case, uh, Planetary Resources, which is a company put together of all these executives, means that this is they are the ones who are going to own and operate this technology, and it creates this whole new marketplace of space, gas, exploration, and mining, um, and a whole bunch of new opportunities that aren't, I mean, it wasn't even on the real scope of things that NASA was capable of. So this sounds like uh, the whaling corporation is going to be real, mm. and uh, <laughs> oh man, they're going to find the aliens. Yeah, definitely going to find the aliens. Yeah. But the good news is, you know, when you're so when you look at the uh, the, the government driven space exploration, it has kind of a, a slow, methodical plotting pace. But when you privatize it, and there's all of this all of this push, you know, NASA will talk about crazy missions they're going to do. 
you're like, oh, you know, we expect to have this on the ground by 2025. Yeah. When you privatize it and there's going to be companies, um, you know, competing with each other to achieve these things before anybody else does it, well, it essentially creates a new Cold War race. Exactly. And that's that's what we need. I mean, if China started up a, a space program that we wanted to compete with, I'm sure uh, that 2025 date would have been would be uh, knocked up a few years, you know? Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's what happened I mean, when we got to the moon, if you believe yeah. that. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, and we certainly, if it I, wasn't for the threat of the Russians, there's no way we would have made it to the moon as soon as we did. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I mean, because I'm, I'm sure they pushed the envelope on a few different things to make that happen. Yeah, know? absolutely. Um, so, you know, um, but we haven't come back since Apollo 18, as the movie told us. I watch a <laughs> lot of movies about space. I'm sorry. So... <laughs> And so now in maybe in a few years, you'll be going to buy that that wedding band or whatever. And you can choose between earthbound plutonium or plutonium, platinum or plutonium if you're into radiation. Uh, or maybe you can spend the extra dollar and uh, get some some asteroid found platinum. Excellent. Be an expensive Excellent. thing. Excellent. Actually, you know, you know, kind of semi related. I. You know, for some reason, I saw something about how uh, they're going to the Arctic Circle for resources. And yeah. I guess nobody really has a claim up there except for Russia, since it is part of like Russia. One side yeah. is. Uh, so that's kind of become a new kind of land race. So I got curious and I started reading up again on Wikipedia. Who owns Antarctica? No one does. It hasn't been claimed by exactly. any of the well, countries. Well, no, no, they do. They do. Uh, they have a treaty over it and they do have... Uh, segments of it that are claimed for research bases yeah to but a point that's but no but, not, it's, but it doesn't belong it's not like a sovereign nation or anything yeah, like it's that. not gonna stick if they keep getting through the ice for resources mm, mm. <laughs> that's gonna be a war zone you mean to tell me that we're just gonna sit back and let all these other countries take the stuff from me but i don't think no that's not the arctic circle is where, where they're going for the the resources right now that's the north one. Oh. I'm my talking bad. about Antarctica. I got my the, planet flipped the, upside what's down. Happening, what's happening in the Arctic Circle? Hey, well, wait, wait, let me explain. Got my planet upside down. I know. Turn your turn your planet over. <laughs> Let's turn that globe wait, around. Wait, wait, make that motion again. Turn your turn, globe. Okay. Turn that globe around. All right. All right. Um, Sound like a drunk uncle talking about <laughs> Arctic exploration. <laughs> Don't mind me, kids. I've got the arc. I've got my Earth flipped upside down. Exactly. I'm sorry. My, my planet's upside down. Um, so in the North Pole, where Santa lives. Right, yeah. Here we go. Um, where Santa lives. Apparently, and then, again, this is something else I think I learned from SourceFed. Uh, you know, there's there's not really land. It's just kind of like ice, and but there's minerals down under the ice, and they're they're trying to go yeah, down I mean, there. The, and, all, and basically, all of the glaciers are full of minerals. Yeah, and basically, the whole point was America's not prepared to go there because we have like two icebreakers, and they belong to the Coast Guard. Yeah. So, um, so we're building more and to explore or whatever. But but in Antarctica, because I was curious of what was happening on the other end of the globe, right. where Santa doesn't live, yes. and that's where the penguins are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love these geographical explanations of the, of the planet. One end on has top Santa, where Santa lives. There's... The bottom where the penguins are. That's the right. middle where the people are. That's right. And, and you know, and you know that one Santa special where he's hanging out with penguins is completely BS. It's completely geographically wrong. Wow. Anyways, for a claymation special, um, but there, there's just research down there, and there's a collection. You know, there's so many birds and mammals that live down there. You know, the ones you expect and the bacteria. Blue-footed booby. The way this is going around, <laughs> blue-footed booby. There are blue but there's androids. There, there's asteroids down there too that have crashed and everything like that. So I don't know where I was going to go from there because all that other stuff happened in the middle with I'm the sorry. low flipping. And there was got my planet got upside down. I know. I know. I know exactly. Oh, geez. Um, let's bring it back to tech. <laughs> kind of want to keep talking about the upside down planet. Okay, what do you want to talk about the upside down planet? I got nothing. I was hoping you no, had something. No, I had nothing else. No, I don't know if we said this, but did you know that the United States does not have a claim in the Antarctic territories? We don't. We we have... We have no, we Wait, have absolutely we have none. Hold on. We can't get there. No, we no. what it is is that we have... We are one of the nations who signed the Antarctic Treaty, but we have... We've reserved the right to make a claim in the original treaty, but we have yet to make that claim. Oh, don't so the we, current so claimants we, are currently uh, the UK, New Zealand, France, Norway, Australia, Norway, Chile, uh, and Argentina. Why the hell 
are Chile and Argentina making claims for some place they're not going to go? They're closer, for one thing. Yeah. Well, I don't know if well they signed the treaty. I don't, we don't we don't know enough. Oh, about that's the United. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I see. We're, we're that's, talking about that's the United Kingdom's flag. I got that confused. <laughs> we're talking about stuff that we shouldn't. Uh, yeah, you're right. The ones yeah. with the Queen, Michael. Oh, the ones with the Queen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this is the wrong hand because you'll actually see this one. Okay. And they own parts of Canada, so they might actually get a little extra piece of Antarctica. <laughs> that or, has or the Arctic on Circle. Is that Arctic, bearing on it? The Arctic Circle. My bad. And Canada is where the, the moose are. Yes. And maple syrup. And maple syrup. And Mexico is where the tequila comes from. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and pesos. I'm glad you got North America down. Yeah, North America's done. Listen. That's, that's the easy one. The way I remember it <laughs> is Canada is America's hat. Yes. Uh, and Mexico is its beard. Yes. And cocaine comes from South America. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't get divided up. It's just South America. It's just South America just... is all cocaine. Cocaine and chinchillas. <laughs> rainforest. Oh, We're killing man. rainforest. I know that part too. There's no rainforest and down there anymore. No main... Oh, that's gone. Chris so... is silent gone. in the Fern chat room, Gully. so I'm assuming she's having a heart attack. Last time. Well, last time. Because oh, we're okay. butchering. Because she, she actually knows about this yeah, stuff. Yeah, because we're butchering She's the actually world. been other, to other continents. So... What are we talking about? I don't know. Uh, you were talking about cocaine from South America. No, but who's in the chat room that's complaining? No one is yet. Oh, She's no silent, so we're, we're presuming her <laughs> head's exploding. Yeah. Um, yes. Wow. Um, I have to share this. It's kind of going back to video games, but uh, uh, well, uh, Ch Chachi's girlfriend got an Xbox, and it's been an, it's been a tremendous experience on Twitter. <laughs> but I love yeah. that her her. Uh, her, the name they gave her before she did her own name was Splotchy Mango 85. Splotchy Mango? Splotchy Mango 85. That's what the random Xbox generator gave her. <laughs> yes. <It's rough. laughs> so I hope if she goes out for softball this year, it's on the back of her jersey. So I just want to put that out there. So <laughs> That's amazing. It's unfortunate. Wow. Uh, so the tech news I had that was actually just hit today. That was the biggest thing I could think of. Um, Google Drive finally came out. Surprise! Sure did. Because everybody's been speculating for how long now, and is it is it, is it it's replacing Google Docs? I'm understanding it's not quite replacing Google Docs. But if I sign up for it, it replaced Google Docs. So what it is, which is really frustrating, is going to make a lot of people angry. If you actually sign up for um, Google Drive, you go to um, if you sign up for Google Drive, you install Google Drive, which just as a primer, uh, is a lot like Dropbox, if you know anything about that. Okay. If you don't know anything about that, um, it's basically you sign up for free, you get five gigs of space, I believe, five? Yeah. Um, and then it creates a folder on your computer, so I could feasibly stick something on my Google Drive. Uh, it could be a The screenplay on your home computer. That has it audio. could be, you know, literally anything. It's just like a folder. Uh, and then I could go to another computer that also has Google Drive installed, and that folder is synced. Um, you can also use this to share files with people to collaborate on things. So there have been plenty of times using Dropbox where uh, Mike would send me a file by uploading it to his Dropbox and then send me a link. And then if he makes a change to that file, it eventually syncs itself up, and I get access to those changes. So Google Drive works in the exact same way. But funny story, so you sign up for Google Drive, you're already a user of Google Docs. Later in the day, as I may have done about, I don't know, an hour ago, you go to docs.google.com. You know what it does? It redirects you to drive.google.com. You can't find your documents. <laughs> oh, glad I didn't sign up now. Because uh, oh, that would have screwed I up Literally, the this only show. way I was able to get to the doc for this show was by finding the email in which you invited me to the doc. I can't quite figure out how to get to the things I've been invited to. Huh. Yeah. So, so I mean, I, it doesn't, doesn't put all those documents in your Google Docs in the drive. It just says that you're not going here anymore. Right. Like, I cannot actually go to, do, I'm going to type in docs.google.com, redirects to drive.google.com slash hash my dash drive, and I now have all of the things that have ever been put inside, like, Google Docs by me, like files that I've imported, but not things that I've okay, created. Okay, but not to share stuff. Oh, there we go. Okay. You have to click shared with me. Okay. Okay. But so... I, so I, 
So now with Google Docs, you don't have any established size limit unless you start uploading stuff, which I think they gave you a gigabyte, if I'm not concerned, if I'm yeah. not confused. If I'm not concerned. Yeah. yeah. If I'm not oh, concerned. and alongside with it, they also increase the size of your Google, uh, your Gmail inbox to 10 gigs. Good. That's getting a little cozy for my comfort right now because um, I don't delete things. I'm a pack rat online, apparently. Yeah, I don't um, delete anything from email. I mean, that's like kind of my records, right? You're like, oh, you sent me an email like two years ago where I said I'd do that thing. Oh, right. there it is. <laughs> you know, I mean, and that saved me a couple of times. To oh, be absolutely. honest. I are like, oh, what was that thing I signed up for like two years ago? Now they want money for something that I don't remember agreeing to. Uh, yeah. Oh, there it is. And that's not what we said. And there we go. You know, I mean, <laughs> sorry, they're yelling spl splotchy mango in the chat room. Um, show title. And uh, either that or Globe is upside down. Um, yeah, that's... <sighs> And, and, well, you, you know, and you didn't even find that right away, you know, and, and yeah. they've been pushing Google Docs for so long and, you know, telling people to use it this way. We have a use case for this. And now they they seem to kind but of unceremoniously. It, is, it, is, um, it seems to be if anybody's currently using Dropbox thinking about making the switch. Um, the price comparison is that the they don't have the exact same plans as Dropbox does. I'm mm -hmm. kind of doing this from memory. But it's basically you get a little bit more space with Google Drive than you do with the same plan on Dropbox, yeah. and you pay a little bit more. So there really isn't much of a price differential. You're going to be paying the same for both services for you the are. same amount of space. So I was hearing it was a little cheaper. There it is, five dollars, uh, five gigabytes for free. Yep. Um, <laughs> you can upgrade, uh, which is already you know better than Dropbox <laughs> to a point. Uh, you, you get twenty five gigabytes for two forty nine a month. Right. And over at Dropbox. And now now for the Drive and Picasa. The only thing is, this is combined, and plus a bonus, you'll, they'll bump your Gmail up to 25 gigabytes. Uh, is this right? 100 gigabytes a month is $5 a month? For what? For, well, here's the, here's a, for 100 gigabytes, it's $5 a month. For Google Drive? Yes. I'm currently paying $10 a month on Dropbox for 25 gigabytes. Right, and that's um, if you're paying ten for twenty five. That I don't even know what plan that is. That's not a plan. You have no, a bunch on, of on, on Dropbox. Yeah, and I'm looking at Dropbox. On oh. Dropbox, they have what's their tickets for free, plus five hundred megs per referral. They have the Pro fifty, which is uh, fifty gigs for ten, plus one gig per referral. For ten bucks a month. Okay, that's what I have. Out. I just know I'm paying ten dollars a month, and I have lots okay. and lots yeah. of stuff because I share video files. So this is right. and, and and now I have everybody on this. I I just don't want to sign everybody. You know, get all my clients to uh, you know roll over to this because it's right. cheaper for me. I mean, well, yeah, I do want, really to. want to. But, and, the other thing is, you have applications like One Password that are currently depending on things like Dropbox. Like it's yeah. built into the system. It's yeah. not a hack where you do it. There's actually a drop down in the menu that says sync with Dropbox. That's so how. Uh, and, and I'm also worried what this is going to do because our teleprompter software, we use Teleprompt Plus for producing Unsung for, uh, on my iPad. Yeah. Uh, it's really nice. I control it uh, with my iPhone on the other side of the camera. So, you know, I don't need another person, you know, operating that. Uh, and it, work, it works out really smoothly. But how I get the docs in there is it will actually sign into Dropbox or Google Docs. I typically use Google Docs because that's what's being sent to me from my client. Um, and and that works pretty smoothly. So, yeah, and like we talked about with the whole Facebook acquiring Instagram thing, this is another time where you need to read the terms of service because you need to know who owns that data, where that data is being stored. Yeah. And if for some reason your data gets subpoenaed, what actually happens to it? Yeah, I mean, that's always a concern. I mean, it, it, and, you know, and, you know, I, I use I use Google Docs for my fin financial organization, right. you know, and that could easily, you know, not that I'm really I don't know what anybody would do with them, how much I'm not making. But, um, <laughs> you know, but I mean, it's still a concern for some people that were like, oh, well, your financial records is like, well, they're not well organized, but here you go. Um but uh, I don't know. It, it's and obviously they're going to be eventually. The Google Docs will turn into this for everybody. Like they'll roll everybody over without telling them. Yeah, they'll, they'll definitely roll everybody over. Like, you can expect that all of the Google applications from here on out are going to be involving Google Drive. Um, things like it's going to get end up built into Chrome in some way. Mm -hmm. It's going to which you know, will be nice. Google... I mean, it'll be nice in the long run, but it's uh, 
It's just, yeah. Yeah, you know, how many people are, you know, you see it with Facebook and Instagram re- most recently, uh, Google Plus a couple weeks ago, uh, which I don't think we talked about much of the change here, did we? Uh, we Well, we mentioned that. Oh, we did touch base different. on that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this, um, but 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 the but people are setting their ways with this stuff, and they're offering businesses based on this. And you drop a hammer on them. I mean, how quick? You know, how quick are people moving away from Windows XP? You know, uh, you know, Charles has been telling me about his company just moving to Windows Seven uh, across the board. Um, you know, they they don't. And, and I don't know how Google. I don't, do you work with any Google apps in your uh, in your work there, Charles? No. Yeah, yeah, but some do. Some some companies do of of, of size. Governments. Are using Google Docs a lot. Companies, because, governments, universities yeah. are using Google Docs. So you know, I mean, something like this comes across the board. I mean, maybe maybe it's a different kind of infrastructure. And when they get upgraded, uh, maybe they have a little more of a heads up or something like that. But um, but I mean, this this seems like a significant change, and it, and I'm not sold on it completely. I don't know if it replaces my Dropbox yet. Right, and it's it's all a matter of application support. It's a matter of it'll stability. Come. It'll come. Yeah. There's there's it's, no there's no iPhone and uh, iPad support. It says coming soon on the tag uh, on their website. This is also obviously a direct competitor to iCloud. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just not built into the iOS devices. So you can also expect that this will become something that is built into Android as the Android alternative to iCloud. Yeah, yeah. And Welcome it, to the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and that, and that's fine for for that. And it, it'll probably I'll probably lean towards using this a bit more and more as I go. Just because it is integrated in so many things that we use, I mean, I mean, I practically live in Google all day, you know, right. um, and then you know, hop out for some drop back, drop box, some hot Dropbox action, and then drop back in, right? Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, you saying something? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, but but it, no, I'm gonna have to see because really, where Dropbox uh, gets it for me is how easy it is once I have it like installed on there, and I can yeah, once it's set up, it's super easy. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was it was easy to set up. It, it's not too hard. I don't have too many clients that I send it to, and you know, you get a whole range of people and technical expertise when you're dealing with you know right. clients. Um, that's where you're going to find the problem. It is if I say, hey, just use this thing, and there's okay, how do and I if if I get that email back of, okay, I'm not sure if I can figure this out, then I know we have a problem. I don't get that with Dropbox. It's pretty straightforward. Either they're downloading it on their end and they're, they're, they're switching it or they're just using the website side of it, which is very clean, and, and the job gets done, you know, and they give me the files. It's not a problem. And it, it, it's been the easiest thing uh, for passing files. I remember they were using Mega Upload, and I'm not anymore, obviously. <laughs> I, you know, I kind of celebrated when they gave those that down because I'm like, yes, I won't be getting files from that anymore. Uh, but, but it was so hard because I had to go into my Windows installation. First of all, it wasn't you know Mac only. Uh, apparently, you don't have Macs in New Zealand. Um, and, uh, and and even that, it was so slow to put files up and I had to stay in that. And, you know, this is just like, oh, I'm not getting a folder. It should be up in a little bit. Keep an eye out for it. You know, yeah. it's easy. I walk away. I love it and forget it. I love anything. I can do my job by walking away, and and this this was this was it. And we'll see uh, how this goes. Is this have the uh, desktop side of it? What you mean, like an app? Yeah, like like yeah, a, yeah, well, like yeah. a Dropbox thing. Like I, I was hearing, uh, it operates in the exact same way. I know SkyDrive has something similar. Yeah, uh, you install they... the app. It makes a folder. You put the things in the folder. It gets automatically synced. It sits up in your toolbar and your taskbar. You can see things syncing. It tells you how much. You can buy more storage on the fly. Like I have my Dropbox icon and my Google Drive icon sitting next to each other, and they are literally identical. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I like that it is telling me apparently uh, how much of my 10 gigabytes of Gmail I've used already. Thanks. Um, and I don't use any Picasso. Well, there you go. What? It's the future. I'll, I'll probably end up using it. You'll watch. It's going to be the future soon. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Uh, and I think that's everything we have for this week, guys. Uh, Frank, since we got you in the Hangout, is there any uh, news stories that popped up that you think uh, we should be bringing up on here? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Thank you. Painfully dry news. It is, isn't it? I mean, uh, I mean, the, the biggest video game news I saw from this week was Max Payne Three is going to come on two Xbox discs. 
It's not the first game to do that. No, it's so. not the first game to do it, but it, the, the reports also were the PC uh, is going to be a 35 gigabyte install. <laughs> My <Yeah>. God. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm glad I'm going to be getting it on Xbox. They, <laughs> and Chris uh, is high <laughs> from the chat room, by the way, uh, Frank. They, uh, they're getting too outrageous with this. I mean, I wasn't that impressed at the Comic Con when we saw the preview of the game. I was. I, I'm a big Max Payne fan, though. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I might actually drop the three or five bucks on the iOS version just to play it again. Um, but I, I've always been a fan. I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited to see it. it. It's, and you know, I don't buy too many games, uh, you know, new games like that. But uh, I think Max Payne Three is going to be on the list for me. So. But um, but I've never had to switch. I never had a game. I had to switch this on the Xbox. So that's going to be something new. I have one. I've never played it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? I keep getting new games before I get around to playing it. Which one is it? Uh, Rage. Oh, that's two discs on there. Three. Three discs. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, I know Forza. Uh, both Forza three and Forza four were both two discs, but those were just for additional content, just to get more cars and tracks. Yeah, and that's the only reason why you had the second disc for those. You could still play just on one disc. It yeah. just sucked essentially. And I remember Halo Two was something like that. Like, well, it was a special edition I picked up, and they had a lot of the content on the other disc. Uh, plus, it was like a DVD with you know movies and stuff, documentaries. Um, so, uh, but well, you, that brings up an interesting question. I mean, we t- talked a little bit about the rumors before. I, I think it's a, pretty much a safe bet we're going Blu-ray for Xbox. If there's a disc at all. If there's a disc yeah, If there's system. a disc at all. I mean, it doesn't make sense for there to be more physical media, but if there had to be, it would be Blu-ray. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it makes sense when your games are 35 gigabytes for a download. Yeah. In the long run, because I'm not... Yeah, I mean, the, the question is if, really... the, uh, if the bandwidth infrastructure will be around to push that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because, I mean, cable, like the cable plans you see today are not a matter of the cable not being able to sustain the high bandwidth. Mm-hmm. A coaxial cable can do incredible throughput. You don't need FiOS to really blow the pants off your router. Yeah. But it's a matter of the infrastructure being there to do that without, you know, blowing up the switchboards and, and ruining everything for everybody. It's managing that massive flow of information that we're just not used to yet. So if that doesn't happen in time, then Microsoft is stuck in this awkward place where they're like, hey, man, the market's changing. We got to make new stuff and we got to be prepared for this. So if we're putting out a new console, it's got to have a disc in it because, you know, Comcast didn't want to cooperate and make it so people can get uh, gigabit uh, internet into their home yet. Yeah, and plus on top of that, you have to worry about your caps if you're downloading games like that. Because, I mean, some people some people go and buy a lot of games. Yeah. And if they're if they're dropping on, like, you know, I just went out and bought Max Payne. I just went about bought, uh, you know, L.A. Noir. that's three discs, you know. Uh, I mean, you're, you're cutting into that, you know, on top of all your Netflix and God knows what else you're doing, you know. Um, or you're a crazy person like us that's downloading Ubuntu installations like Chachi is right now. Um, you know, I, it, it's, people are going to start hitting that cap more and more. It's going to become a problem. And then it's going to make people scared to use these services. And then people just not use these services, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is, you know, kind of what we're seeing on the phones, you know. Yeah, that's why we have Sprint saying, you know, oh, you... you what was that? Do you see the most, the most, uh, the, the latest uh, ones where the the kid from the musical said, "Dad didn't download the video of my musical because yes. he had to get that app." Yes. Uh, yeah. So I mean, that's kind of, and that really is kind of some of the thinking, you know. So sure. yeah, we're seeing that as we hit our 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 cap, our our, our cap on our grandfathered unlimited plans here on the AT and T stuff, uh, Missy and I. So, you know. Well, on that note, guys, let's head out here. Hey, Frank, thanks for dropping into uh, the Hangout here. Sure. So uh, we'll uh, keep exploring with that and see how it works. And uh, maybe we'll just have a circle of approved uh, drop-in guests. And whenever anybody wants in, and we'll, we'll work around that or something. Um, so, Chachi. What up? You're at insertcoin to begin.com. Always. You guys are doing things over there. We try to. You try to. Okay. What, what's some of the big stories this week? <laughs> there there really aren't many big stories this week. 
All I really heard the most about was uh, uh, you playing a Facebook game. Yeah, I played uh, the house Facebook game. If you ever have an opportunity to do that, don't. Okay. <laughs> Just pass, walk away, smack yourself with a frying pan. All of these are, val- are, are viable options that are better than playing the house Facebook game. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, Rob, you're at robjdlc.com. You're getting very dark. That means it's time to end the show. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I had to turn away from my light source. Oh, there we go. There we go. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm building uh, some cool stuff that I um, can't talk about. The usual Rob line. The usual stuff, yeah. And uh, it's some cool worse. stuff you can't talk about that will be in Wired someday. Yes. Then you can yes. tell us all about it. Absolutely. You can think, I was listening to Awesome Cast when I was sitting right in front of him. <laughs> yeah. pieces. One day, I'll be driving my asteroid mining ship. <laughs> and then you'll say, <laughs> I knew like, that guy. I remember that guy when yeah. he used to do this podcast from an egg chair. From an egg chair. There you go. Excellent, excellent. Um, and I'm, hey, that's Chachi. Hi. Hey. Hey, and I'm over at Sorgatron.com, MikeSorgatron.com. Check out everything else going on at SorgatronMedia.com. All the other podcast releases, new edition of Unsung, uh, episode 26 with Chachi hanging down. At, Chachi with the sexy backgrounds of the city uh, behind him. I was, I was really yeah, happy with Yeah, I roasted my ass off. I was really happy FYI. with that shoot. Yes, yes. Um, and fighting with the train was fun too. Yeah. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and you can go over to contact at us or uh, go over to awesomecast.com for this, uh, comment on commenting on this and all past episodes of the awesome cast. Uh, drop us a line to contact at awesomecast.com Twitter at awesomecast. Uh, we are on Facebook. Uh, we're also on Google plus drop in there, drop in a circle, join us on the hangouts here. Uh, as we experiment with it here Tuesday nights at 7 PM Eastern media. Dot com. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Awesome in the chat room, as usual. Chris, Riz, uh, Juggler John was in there. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.